Hey everybody! Well, today I thought we could take a look at an interesting and obscure prop replica from Star Trek the original series. So this device was called a servo, and it was from an episode called Assignment Earth from Season 3, and it was a pretty cool episode. It's actually one of my favorite episodes, and it um, was also kind of a unique episode just because it had a different feel to it. So um, in the episode we get introduced to a character named Gary Seven, and he's this mysterious character that um, somehow gets beamed aboard the Enterprise. They accidentally intercepted his transportation after the Enterprise went back in time to study 1968 Earth. And so um, all of a sudden this character Gary Seven shows up and they don't know who he is. He said he's there to save the Earth, but Captain Kirk's not sure if he's telling the truth. Is he there to save the Earth or is he there to harm it? And so um, as uh, we get introduced more to this character, he has this interesting device called a servo. That's what this is. It looks like a pen, but it's kind of one of these devices that kind of does everything. It can be a weapon, but it can also be things to unlock um, doors or knock people out or deactivate some kind of a computer or device. So let me show you uh, what it looked like in the episode. So here is Gary Seven, and he's being kept in a confinement area. And uh, this actor was named Robert Lansing. He's a really good actor. I've seen him in other shows as well. And so he's trying to figure out how he's going to be able to get out of this, uh, this cell. So this is the first time that we get to see the servo. Gary Seven pulls it out of his pocket, and he's about ready to activate it so he can um, deactivate the force field. And here he deactivates the force field by just aiming it right at it. The servo also was a stunning type of weapon, I guess you could call it a weapon, uh, relatively harmless. He ends up stunning this uh, security guard and he kind of gets all happy and, and just gets his blank smile on his face. But, um, you know, I think the problem with something like the servo, it would have been something like Doctor Who and the sonic screw screwdriver. Um, it became, uh, it becomes like a crutch for the character so that, you know, it's kind of a, a do-all kind of prop. Uh, in I think in one of the se seasons of uh, Doctor Who, at least one, the ones with Tom Baker, um, one of the producers, or the writers maybe, wrote the sonic screwdriver completely out because it became something where it made it hard for the writers. They couldn't um, make it a challenge for the actor or for the character to get into a sticky situation. In this case with Gary Seven, you know, with his servo thing, uh, if this became an actual series, they, they may not have kept that device because, you know, you have something that no matter what kind of situation he's in, he can use that servo to get out of it. This thing not only was able to stun uh, like the, the, the security guard, but it could take down the whole um, wall here for the, uh, the force field. And also, uh, you know, it may have been a, a weapon of some kind or, it, you know, it's, it's be too easy to use that to get out of a situation. And a lot of writers tend to not like that sort of thing. So in that scene you can see how it deactivated the force field, but it also kind of knocks that guard out. So here you can tell that he is turning some dials on there to set, you know, whatever he needs it to do. And then when he pulls down on that little metal, it looks like a clip, the little um, antennas pop out right there. And you can see they added an effect, like the little glowing effect, but it has like these little um, antennas that pop out. And that's what it looks like when they don't have the effect on there. So it looks kind of like a ballpoint pen with little antennas on it. Kind of reminds me of my favorite Martian. <laughs> but it's kind of a cool looking device. There's kind of a weird scene in this episode where the cat comes through the door into the transporter room. And uh, it's funny how the doors know just to open just enough to let the cat in instead of opening all the way. The doors never made sense on Star Trek, whether it be the original show or the next generation. You know, people would... Um, get ready to walk out the door and then they turn around to talk to somebody and then as soon as they turn back around the door automatically opens like the door you know knew to wait for them to get done talking to open so <laughs> uh, just one of those weird kind of I don't know if it's necessarily a blooper but it's just one of those things where you, you know it leaves you thinking you know what's the deal with that this episode was kind of unique for a couple of reasons um, number one it was a time travel episode which was pretty cool and then also, it centered a lot on the Gary Seven and his secretary uh, characters. It was, you know, they were in it quite a bit. And I always wondered why this episode was slightly different than the rest of them. And I later found out that, the, uh, that this episode was originally made to be a pitch to the network, Paramount, to uh, make a new show based on this character of Gary Seven. He was going to be this new uh, character where he's going to probably help out the Earth 
And uh, with his background story established here on Star Trek, where he was um, pretty much uh, raised and trained by aliens to come down and help the human race, um, I, I think it would have made a really cool show. I would have really liked to have seen this become a real show, especially because Gary Lansing is such a good actor. I think he would have been a, the perfect actor for that role. And I think it would have opened up another show with cool gadgets and other things that, you know, that we'd see. And so unfortunately, Paramount did not, uh, they just didn't buy it and they ended up not going for it. So it's really too bad, but it's kind of interesting that this was originally a pitch for a completely different show used on Star Trek. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Now, looking back at this piece now, um, I got this quite a few years ago. I think it was an eBay find, and I don't know who made it, but whoever did make it did an excellent job on it because this is all machined aluminum. I mean, this is a very nice looking piece. You can see it's got a nice uh, sharp edge here for kind of like the ballpoint pen looking thing. It's got the dials on here, and they actually have little hash marks on there. And then you have the uh, clip right here, and then there's what the tip looks like. And it looks just like the actual prop. Um, I don't know what ever happened to the original prop. It's probably out there somewhere. I never have seen it in any kind of uh, uh, an exhibit, and I've been to quite a few um, museum exhibits that had Star Trek props in it. But this one here, uh, this replica is pretty well done. You can see the dials will actually turn. So you can actually turn the dials. And then this one also turns, and they're very smooth too. It's like a really nice smooth uh, thing in there. But the coolest part, of course, is the little antennas. You can pull this down, and just like in the episode, the antennas pop out just like that. <laughs> and they are done exactly like the original prop was done. It was just a sliding little uh, like tube right here, and you can see it looks like a, the clip for your pocket. And then when you pull it up, it actually pulls those wires in like that, and the two little ball bearings at the top go inside like that. So it's done the same way, and there's actually a hole drilled through it where the, the little ball pieces go inside there. And I'm pretty sure those are just soldered on. But yeah, it looks really cool. It'd be cool if it made the sound effect when you pulled those out, <laughs> but it's pretty cool. Yeah, so um, really neat piece. Um, the person who'd made these, I think he he didn't make, make too many of these. I'm, I don't know. I, I saw a few of these pop up on eBay now and then, and then they disappeared for quite a few years. And now I see them occasionally pop up on eBay. But they go for a lot of money. I mean, I think I've seen them sell anywhere between over $200 to $300. Um, there's not a whole lot of these floating around. And so that makes them rather rare. And I'm sure that's probably why. But it's a beautiful looking piece. And I think the, uh, the person who made it did an excellent job on these. So maybe he'll make some more of these and they'll pop up again. But uh, I'm sure they're not probably the cheapest things to make. And they're probably pretty time consuming as well. And any kind of prop like these that are made privately, you know, garage kind of garage kits. I don't know, it's not really a kit, but these people do put a lot of work and effort into these. And so that's probably why they don't make a lot of them. And they probably don't make a lot of money on them. And it probably costs a lot of mo uh, money just to, to make it. But anyway, uh, that is a close up of the Gary 7 Servo. If you've seen that episode, you'll know exactly what this is. If you haven't seen it, you got to check it out. It's an excellent episode. I really like it. It's got some humor in it. But it's also interesting to think that it could have been a completely different TV series. And I really wish it would have been a, another TV series. That would have been really cool. Would have been a great show. All right. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And also, please subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. And thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you on the next episode. So thanks again and have a good one.